Hey guys, welcome back. This video is about tools that any pro AV tech or engineer should have in their tool belt or toolbox. Let's begin with the tweaker. This is a must have. This tool has many applications from screwing wires into a Phoenix block to adjusting an analog amp level. Just make sure you have one. The next tool is a level. Use it for hang and bangs or to make sure that anything you're installing is level. That makes the difference between pro work and mediocre work. Another item is electrical tape. For Pro AV, I prefer white because it can be served as a temporary label and of course to protect exposed wires even if we're dealing with low voltage. Testers, specifically Ethernet and coax. Many times we cannot connect or access a resource on an AV network and it's due to a bad cable crimp or damaged Ethernet patch cable. Make sure you have one so you can verify your cable's integrity. Another key item is the portable label printer. You may need to label a port or provide direction and a label does look more professional than tape with some writing on it, so get one. A multimeter can be crucial from checking polarity, AC-DC voltage and continuity. I cannot stress how critical it is and don't be cheap about it, get a good one. The next tool is the Bluetooth speaker. This can assist you while testing and troubleshooting. Many pro AV environments now offer Bluetooth connectivity. Now you might want one with a 3.5 millimeter analog input, that way you can test analog signals leaving a DSP output or an IO as you're checking signal flow. Don't forget to subscribe and thank you guys. Another adapter I find crucial, especially for environments with KVMs, those are HDMI to DVI converters. Right now with the delays in equipment worldwide, many legacy KVM systems are being purchased by clients and integrators. I've actually used one this year in 2022. The next doohickey adapter thingy is called a null adapter. It's used for enabling communication between two serial devices. We'll discuss RS-232 later on. This cable is a cable we're very familiar with. Most of us use it on our printers at home or to interface with a Crestron processor at work. This is another lifesaver. The Ethernet coupler will allow you to extend the network connection beyond its physical limits. Helpful in countless scenarios. This is a serial to USB cable used to interface with network switches. This one is from Cisco and you should always connect it to the console port and not the management port behind the Cisco switch. Make sure you have the correct drivers as well. This is a pair of shielded RJ45 connectors. Many of the Pro AV gear requires shielded termination on the cable transport. So make sure you have at least a pair in your toolbox. As you can see, this is a full kit with the components necessary to professionally terminate both ends of the cable or any cable who happens to require a retermination. A switch and our router with PoE Plus capability. This is not the best example for PoE Plus but this router is configured as a DHCP server on Ethernet port 0 and a switch on port 1 through 4. This allows me to use it as a switch to interface with local devices or connect my DHCP server port to the other half of the switch to allow all the devices to be served in IP address. This adapter is called a gender changer and this particular model converts a female DB9 connector into a male DB9 connector. Those can be used for TV control, for instance. Six, five, four, three, two. An SPL meter, which is used to calibrate audio in a home theater or conference room can also help you prove that the speakers are fine and that the background noise is coming from the HVAC vent. A tweaker is great, but for rack installations and equipment assembly, you'll need a regular sized flat and Phillips screwdriver. 
Terminal blocks are great for wiring meat and clean connections that can be for simple relay control or custom connections which are very common. RCA, yes RCA connectors. What better way to befriend the audio guy who still loves his RCA connections? A heat gun. Now this one is wired but you can find some wireless versions both gas and electric. This is a great tool for shrink noodles for your analog terminations. Not last and not least, the flush cutter. It goes by many names, but let's just stick with flush cutters. Its sole purpose is to provide a flush cut when used properly. A good example would be using it to cut a zip tie in a rack shelf assembly. Make sure you own one. A coax crimping tool is good to have in case you still have analog cable boxes to install. Half the time those terminations are bad in commercial environments. A soldering iron for those bad XLR connections and make sure you get a good one, at least 200 watts. A glue gun in case you need to solder in tight areas and you need to keep wires in place after the fact. Analog testing cables are great for example a TRS connector on one end and on the other end you can wire it to a Phoenix block in order to test signal flow as I mentioned earlier. Guys, you may have noticed that I didn't mention other tools but that's because those tools should be in your backpack and that's another video. But everything I mentioned so far is hardware so stand by for the must have list of software.